this anyway, so. All right, Levi, first race back after the Tour de France. Obviously, the first three days have been uh, stages for the sprinters. More importantly, how are you feeling, and uh, how's your wrist holding up? Yeah, Tour of Missouri has been, uh, it's been fast and furious so far for the sprinters. Well, two sprinters, Mark Cavendish winning two and Tor Hushoff winning today. So I guess we're just waiting around for the time trial. Hopefully that'll turn out well. and um, Maybe that's going to work out for me because I'm feeling better as the race goes on. I've had a lot of work done on my arm because it's, it's not doing the muscles and everything around uh, the wrist, not doing so great when I started the race. But uh, the medical team here at the race has, has done wonders. And um, as you can see, I have this spider tech... Uh, tape on and that, that helps a lot in the race so I'm feeling better and uh, hopefully I'll have a good time trial perfect and uh, this is currently your last race scheduled for 2009 but I know you have a big event coming up in October you can you talk a little bit about that and uh, the meaning behind Grand Fondo I think a lot of people don't really understand what that even means yeah I'm, I'm really excited about the King Ridge Grand Fondo on October 3rd um, you know, I, when you have an idea and you get really excited about it, it sometimes it's, it's hard to make it come to reality and, and to see this thing uh, come alive and sell out in the first year. 3,500 people um, taking the roads in Sonoma County at, at one time is going to be awesome. And I'm really looking forward to it. The entire community, the cycling community in, in Northern California is, is jacked and ready to go. We call it a Grand Fondo because in Italy they have these mass participation cycling events that are for all abilities, from professional to amateur to recreational cyclists. And it's uh, challenging, it's long distance, and it's a great way for people to, to get out there and ride their bikes and test themselves. And we're going to have our Grand Fondo yearly, and hopefully people will be able to uh, gauge their, their time from year to year. We're going to have timing chips so that if you want to uh, improve upon your time, that information is there for you. We're going to have aid stations stocked full of water and food, sandwiches, fruit, everything you can think of. We've got a lot of great sponsors on board. Um, just really excited about it. And I know it's benefiting some of uh, some organizations near and dear to your heart. <clears throat> That's right. Um, we've been able to raise a lot of money primarily for the city of Santa Rosa to bring the Tour of California back again in 2010. Uh, Santa Rosa has been a, a Finnish city stop in the Tour of California every year in its existence and in my opinion has had the best crowds every year. Every year we come into the start finish for the t first time and it just erupts in this just explosion of noise and it's, it's awesome. It, for me it sends chills down my spine, you know, being my hometown, and, and I'll never forget le leading the race into Santa Rosa for two of those years, and um, so we're going to hopefully keep the race coming back every year. Uh, the other beneficiary of the Grand Fondo is uh, the Forget-Me-Not Farm of Sonoma County, which is a therapy farm for at-risk kids. My wife um, <clears throat> works there quite a bit. I actually went out with her uh, pro just before this race, still like a week before this race, to meet the kids and meet the animals. The animals are all rescued. The kids have had a troubled upbringing and they learn a lot of compassion and responsibility at the farm working with these animals and it helps to break that cycle of abuse that they've had in their lives. And, and uh, you know, it, it's, it, it sounds like a great cause, but once you go out there and you see what it is, it, it really uh, it, it, it hits home and, and proud to put on this event that's going to raise a significant amount of money for them. That's great. Good luck with that. Thank you. I also know um, there's a great deal of admiration in the cycling community for you, not because of only what you've been able to achieve on the bike, but how you give back to, to the cycling community, at least with promoting uh, safety and uh, awareness within the, the cycling community. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, as, as any professional cyclist, we spend uh, a lot of time out on the road. In, in 
in amongst the traffic and the weather and and uh, cars and you know there's always incidents and accidents out there and, and we want to try to educate cyclists and educate drivers and just make people more aware of what can happen out on the road and, and how to deal with an accident if that does happen. Uh, I've done uh, PSAs for helmets before. Um, now I'm heavily involved with Road ID, which is an ID bracelet that's on you at all times. Um, for example, if, if you do crash, even if you're with your friends, you want the ID on your on your person because if your, your bike doesn't go to the hospital, your helmet might not go to the hospital. And the other thing is, you know, I've, I've been out training with friends where they had a bad accident <clears throat> and I don't really know who to call because I don't have their girlfriend's phone number or their contact person's phone number. It's usually just 911. Um, so th with, with this ID is, you know, you can make a phone call, uh, alert their contact person and get all their medical information right away. So if, you're, if you happen to be alone, for example, and you crash and you're unconscious and you go to the hospital, this would definitely save your life. So it's a, it's a great thing, and, and I'm proud to wear it every day. It, it's more than anything, I think it's just a huge peace of mind. That's key. For, Def my, for my friends and family. Definitely a lot of horror stories, uh, you know, in the past few months, especially throughout the years as well. Yeah, and, and I, I hear a lot of those because, uh, you know, being, <clears throat> being an, an athlete with Road ID, I hear a lot of people saying how either the road ID saved their lives or how they had wished uh, a friend or a family had had the road ID. Great. I guess uh, just to close, any uh, off-season plans, vacations, relaxing? <laughs> well, I've been fortunate to have a lot of time at home this year. You know, although being at home with an injury isn't really time off, you know, I'm still focused. I trained really hard to get back to this point. Uh, I didn't want to finished my season in July, um, it just didn't feel right, and I know that for next year, it's better for next year, it's better for my fitness. So I've been working hard, but I think in the off season, you know, just to be home and relax, to go mountain biking with my friends, take the day off and do whatever, that's really what I need, and what I'm looking forward to. Great, thanks so much. Thanks, see you later.